Hello Year 6, welcome to your Friday Maths video, hopefully your last ever Maths home learning video. Um, your learning question for today then is, can I revise bod maths or bid maths, multiples, primes and factors? So we're moving on today to pages 14 and 15 and we are just revising some things that we've already had a look at just to make sure that we are definitely secure in those areas before we come back to school next week. Okay, so I'm going to split this video into two halves um, because your first page is all about bid math. So I'm going to go over that first so you can have a go at that page. Then we'll go over multiples, primes and factors so you can have a go at your second page. Okay, so I have got a start for you today. I have got a Kahoot quiz, but it's on bid math. So I just wanted to quickly recap bid math, some facts, some um, tips for you so that you can have a really good go at the quiz. So. Let's have a look then. Let's just remind ourselves what bid mass stands for first. Okay, so remember, this is the order in which you've got to do your operations. Okay, so each letter stands for a different operation. Let's have a look. So B stands for brackets. So remember, if you've got any calculation and it's got brackets in, you've always, 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 always got to do the brackets first. Okay, I then stands for indices which is your squared and your cubed numbers. You'd always do those set after brackets. Then you do your division, then multiplication, then addition, then subtraction. Okay, you are going to need this quite a lot today in your work. So if I was you, I would jot this down somewhere, maybe at the top of your page or in your purple book. Just jot down what each letter stands for so that you can use it to refer to when you're doing your work today. Okay, let's just have a look, look at a couple of questions together, and um, then you can apply what we do together to your Kahoot quiz. So this one then, we've got 12 add 8 divided by 4. Okay, but 12 add 8 is inside brackets. So we know that B in bid mass stands for brackets, so brackets always, always, always come first. So 12 add 8 is 20 and then we can just carry on finish it off because we've only got division left so 20 divided by 4 would be 5 okay this one then it says 4 times 6 take away 14 so let's go through bid mass and see which one needs to come first so there's no brackets there's no indices there's no division but there is multiplication. So that's going to be the first one. So 4 times 6 is 24. And then you can just finish it off. 24 take away 14 would equal 10. Okay. Do one last one together. So this one then, we've got three operations in this one. So we've got 7 add 8 times 9 take away four. So again, let's go through bid mass. So there's no brackets, there's no indices, there's no division. Multiplication is our first one. So our first one then is going to be eight times nine, which is 72. Okay, and then I'm just going to write out the rest so that we can figure out what to do next. So we've done our multiplication. So after multiplication is addition. So we've got an addition here. So 72 add seven, would be 79, and then we can just finish it off because we've only got a subtraction left. 79 take away 4 would equal 75. Okay, so now then you can go and have a go at your Kahoot quiz. So your game pin for today is 09093945. Okay, remember to use your real name so that I can see who's been having a go, who's done really well, um, and I can send you all a marvellous me. Alina was our winner on our last Kahoot quiz. So well done, Alina. Wonder who it will be today. I will be checking and I will be sending you a marvellous me. So good luck with that. So if you have a go on there, then your work for today then. So we're starting on page 14. Okay, remember, we're in our stretch book. We're in the same book we've been in for a while. So, question one then says, Lou bought 11 plums and cut them into quarters. She ate five quarters and then shared the rest between her three friends. 
circle the calculation that describes how many quarters each friend got. Okay, so then you've been given three different um, calculations and you've got to decide which one would give you the correct answer. Okay, but first of all, my advice to you is work out the answer. Okay, and then you can do the bid maths and see which one gives you the correct answer. So let's just quickly go over how we would work out the answer to this question. So she bought 11 plums and cut them into quarters. Okay, how, how many quarters are there in a whole? There are four, aren't there? So to work out first how many quarters she's got, you first need to do 11 times four. Okay, which we all know, we can do that mentally, is 44. Okay, she ate five quarters, so five quarters I've got, so we can take those off. So 44 take away five would be 39. So she had 39 quarters, and then she shared them between her three friends. So if you do 39 divided by three, that will give you your answer. Okay, okay so if you do 39 divided by three, that will give you your answer. Then, for each of these, go through and work out what answer you would get, okay? So, um, for example, this one, remember you've got to do your brackets first. So, you do 11 times 4 for this one. Take away 5 divided by 3. So, you're going to have to do bus stop for that one. It's going to be a decimal, isn't it? And see, see if 44 take away that gives you the same answer you got above. above. I think you'll be able to tell. Once you've got your answer up there, I think you'll be able to tell whether it's going to be that one or not. This one then, think about that would be 11 times 4, which is 44. 44 take away 5, which is 39. Is that going to give you the right answer? You have a thing. Is that pretty much what you did up there? And then work that one out. Remember, you've got to do your brackets first, then do your division, then do your multiplication and then see which one gives you the correct answer. Circle, and then you've just got to circle the correct one. Okay, question two then says, fill in the missing signs, addition, subtraction, multiplication, or division to make the following calculation correct. Okay, so this is going to be a little bit of trial and error. You're going to just have to have a go. So for this one, I'm just going to have a guess. I'm going to put multiplication in the first one, subtraction in the second one. So, remember, you've got to go in the right order for bid math. So, I know that multiplication comes before subtraction. So, I'm going to do this first. So, 20 times 10 is 200. Take away 5 would equal 195. So, it's definitely not right, is it? It definitely doesn't equal 18. Okay? So, you've just got to keep having a go, changing around, seeing how you, how you can make it work. So that 20, something 10, something 5 equals 18. Okay, just remember to use bid mass. You've got to remember to work it out using bid mass in the correct order. And just make sure it works. Make sure you get the answer 18 before you move on. Okay. Question 3 then. says put a pair of brackets around one step of the calculation below to make the answer as small as possible. Okay, so for this one, you're going to have to do quite a bit of working out. Okay, so first of all, then, I'm going to put my brackets around the first step of this calculation. Okay, and then I'm going to work out what the answer is. And then you're going to have to move the brackets, see what the answer is for that one. Move the brackets, move the brackets. You're going to have to do four different calculations today to see which one gives you the correct answer. So let's do this one together, and then you can have a go at the next one by yourself. So, 16 add 32 then, so I'm going to do the column method. So, 32 add 16, oh, my add sign properly. 6 add 2 is 8, 3 add 1 is 4, okay? So, that equals 48. And then I'm just going to write the rest out. So, 42, sorry, 48 divided by 8, divided by 2, take away 1, okay? So let's just go through bid mass then. So we've done our brackets. We've got no indices. Division would be next. 
So this division is going to be next, isn't it? So 48 divided by 8 is 6. And then we've got divide by 2, take away 1. Okay, so we've got another division. So that's going to be next. So 6 divided by 2 is 3. Take away 1 equals 2. Okay, so your answer for that first one would be 2. But you don't know if any of the others would give you a smaller answer. Because remember, the question says, um, put a pair of brackets around one step of the calculation below to make the answer as small as possible. Okay, so let's just get rid of the brackets there. So that was the first one with the brackets around the first step. But you could next try your brackets around 32 divided by 8. Then you could try your brackets around 8 divided by 2. Okay, and then your last one, you could try your brackets around 2 take away 1. Okay, so you've got to do all four. So I want to see the working out for all four of them and then see which one's got the lowest answer. And that would be your answer. Okay. Then you've got your challenge question at the bottom of page 14. And it says fill in the boxes below using the signs addition, subtraction, multiplication and division. You can only use each sign once. Okay, so you've got 96, then a space for an operation. Then you've got brackets 2 something 6 inside your bracket. Then something 5, something 7. So again, this is going to be a little bit of trial and error. It's quite similar to question 2 but just with all of your operations. It says, what is the largest whole number you can make? What about the smallest whole number? Now try, try using each sign more than once. What are the largest and small, smallest whole numbers you can make now? So it's just having a play about with the different operations, trying to make the biggest number you can, trying to make the smallest number you can, and really solidifying your knowledge of bid mass. Okay. So that's page 14. So you have a go at that. Page 15 then is moving on to thinking about multiples, factors and primes. Now we have done these. So I do know that you've already got a, a basic knowledge of these three things. But I just thought I'd quickly go over them before you do your page. So remember, multiples are a number that can be divided by another number without a remainder. OK, so for example, 12 is a multiple of 4 because you can do 12 divided by 4 and there's no remainder. So basically, it's your times tables. OK, factors then is a number that is multiplied by another to give a product. So for example, 3 is a multiple of 9 because 3 times 3 equals 9. OK, um, let's do another one. 5 would be a multiple of 10 because 2 times 5 is 10, and it fits into 10 perfectly. Okay, and then prime numbers then are numbers that are only divisible by 1 and itself. So, for example, 13, you can only divide it by 13 and 1. There's no other number that goes into 13. Okay, that would be a prime number. So, before we move on then to working our book, I just wanted to quickly show you all of the prime numbers. Now, you can get these on the internet if you just type in into Google prime numbers if you can't quite see mine. So, the highlighted ones in yellow are prime numbers. Okay, so you've got 2, 3, 5, 7, 11, 13, 17, 19, 23, 29, 31, 37, 41, 43, 47, 53, 59, 61, 67, 71, 73, 79, 83, 89, and 97. Okay, so they are your prime numbers between 1 and 100. Okay, so you might need those for a couple of your questions today. Let's have a look at some of your questions. So, question 1 says some numbered counters are shown below. So you've got 1, 3, sorry, 1, 2, 3, 4, 8, and 9. It says, using each counter only once for each question, find the following. So you've got two multiples of seven. So you've just got to put those digits together. You haven't got to multiply them together or add them. So it's not like you've got to do three add four is, is uh, seven. 
you can just put them together. So, for example, three and four would be 34. Yeah? So you've just got to find two multiples of seven. Then your next one it says two prime numbers between 20 and 40. So let's just go back to our prime numbers. So between 20 and 40, then you've got 23, 29, 31 and 37. Okay, so you haven't got many to choose from. So it shouldn't be too tricky. Try and make them using those numbers. Okay, so just remember, you've got to have two for each. Question two then says, Jack goes to ballet every three days and Francis goes to ballet every four days. If they both go to ballet on the 3rd of July, on which other dates in July will they go to ballet together? So this is using your multiples of three and adding four on each time as well. So they both went on the third. So I'm going to start a list. OK, so let's just think about Jack for now. So it said Jack goes to ballet every three days. So his is going to go up in threes, isn't it? So we went on the third. So he's going to go on the six. So three, six, nine. He's going to go on the ninth. Oh, so three, six, nine, then he'll go on the twelfth. Okay, and you're just adding on. Okay, and then just keep going until you get to the end of July. Okay, so around 30. Um, and then for Francis, then it said he goes every four days. So it's not going to be multiples of three. We're going to add four on each time. So three add four is seven. So he went on the seven. Then add another four would be the 11. Okay, add another four would be the 15. And just keep going again until you get to around the end of July. Okay. Then your question then said, on which other dates in July will they go to ballet together? So... Here, Jack's going on the 15th and Francis is going on the 15th. So that's your first one, is the 15th. Um, and then you've got to find, see if there's any others. So do your full list, have a look which ones are common in both lists and that's when they're going on the same day. Okay. Question three then, says the 60 second challenge involves adding numbers using these rules. OK, so it says you start with zero points. For every prime numbered second, add five to your points total. For every second that is a factor of 60, add two to your points total. OK, so then it says, what would your what should your points total be after 60 seconds? So let's just go back to our prime numbers. OK. And you need to figure out how many prime numbers there are between 1 and 60. So let's have a look. So 60 is here. So we're only going up to there. So we've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. So there are 17 prime numbers between 1 and 60. So let's just go back to our question. Okay, let's just... Jot that down. So 17, I'm just going to put PN for prime numbers. Okay. But it's saying for every prime numbered second, you've got to add five. Okay. So it's going to start with something like that 17 times five. Okay. But then we've got for every second that is a factor of 60 add two to your points total. So you are now then going to have to write down 60 and work out all of the factors of 60 and work out how many there are. Okay, so remember factors then are two numbers that multiply together to get 60. So one and 60 would be factors, two and 30, 10 and six. So you keep going and see how many you can get. Just got to make sure you've got all of them. OK, and then if you pop that number, however many you've figured out, how many factors there are, and we've got to multiply it by two, haven't we? Because it says add two to your points total. You've got to multiply that by two. OK, 
and then work it out and that will give you your answer. Okay, so you have a go at that one. And then your final question, your challenge question on the bottom of page 15 says an MRIP, sorry, an MRIP number is a prime number, which when you reverse the order of the digits, gives a different prime number. For example, 13 is an MRIP number because 31 is also prime. So you've got 13, 1 and 3, but when you swap it round to 31, it's still a prime number. What is the largest two-digit MRP number you can find? Can you find any three-digit MRP numbers? So for this one, I'll pop the prime number list back on the board. So first, your first task is to find your largest two-digit prime number that you can swap round and it's still prime. Okay, so that makes it an MRP number. And then your extra, extra challenge is to see if you can find any three-digit numbers that when you swap round are still prime. Okay, so good luck with that challenge. So I hope you're all going to be okay with your maths work for today. I'm sure you will. Don't forget to send me some pictures because I love to see how you are getting on at home. Um, and I am really, really looking forward to having you all back in school on Monday. So I will see you all then.